uh, there are, I believe Dr. Ravi has already spoken a lot about his personal experience. I share a lot of common views with him. Uh, I shall present my limited experience with, uh, my, uh, with neuro aid. Uh, before that, as the standard is a, f a disclosure statement, I'm free and independent neurosurgeon, no direct financial or fiduciary connection with Molia. Uh, the number of patients I've used so far is 30, um, around 30. I have similar reservations as Dr. Ravi. I have not spoken with him about my experience with neuro I had a lot of reservations when I first started it. Um, um, you know really is it a drug or is it due to the natural progression of the natural recovery history of the patient or, or is it truly the drug? So um, when I first started it, I had a lot of reservations, but to my pleasant surprise, the recovery is faster than I expected and it's beyond my expectations in some cases, which I shall illustrate. I'm only taking the recent cases, I'm not even taking the, the, the previous cases. Um, I'm not, like what I say, I'm unable to confirm if the patients reach the maximum potential of recovery in a shorter space of time as a result of neuro aid, or if they exceed this potential compared to other stroke patients without neuro aid. This you need a control randomized trial and all this. And definitely there is no side effect. I've not heard of a single side effect in regards to neuro aid. Um, my indications I've so far used for ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, traumatic brain injury. Uh, I've not used on my pediatrics patient yet. I still have my reservations. I'm not sure about the dosage, when should I use, what's the long-term effect on these pediatrics children. So I'm only using purely for my um, adult patients. Um, when, do I, when do I start to use neuro aid? I usually do it after I've done all the necessary surgical procedure. And there's no, further, there's no further medical or surgical means to optimize the recovery. It means I do not... Cons I do not start immediately. I usually start to one, at least one to two months after everything has settled, after the, the dust has settled. I use in, uh, if there's, uh, and I usually tell the patient, please prescribe only one month. I do not give a full recommended course of three months. I only say it's one month at a time. I, says, I told the patient, says, I'm very pretty transparent. I say that if there is improvement, you come back and get the medicine. If there's no improvement, please stop it. All right, we, we went on this open, uh, with this mutual understanding, all right? Uh, so, so I also told them to date, there is no RCT to confirm the benefits. The certain degree of brain hammer, uh, damage that is already, is very obvious. Uh, I'm not too sure, I thought usually you take maximum, usually at six months you'll do the like GOS scoring, you would, you would like to see how the patient has recovered at six months in insurance is six months to a year. So I took it at six months, but at a, usually at the third month or so, if patients still have some degree of neurological deficits and scan shows no, no surgical causes, no other explanations, then I'll recommend neuro aid to optimize. Okay, so far it's a safe medicine, like what I say, no side effects, no harm trying because the medicine is pretty safe. All right, and I usually tell the patients used to use it for only a month. I, I show you this one case, this first case. Um, this is a 30 year old man um, was having, was uh, went to the hair saloon, had a massage, perfectly well, no previous medical history of note. He had a bleed and he was in coma, uh, GCS. He was intubated and was transferred to our hospital. He was uh, intubated, extension uh, to, extension to painful stimulus. Pupils were slightly unequal already. Uh, his right hemiplegia in deep coma, I couldn't assess the speech. All my cases are all left-sided brain damage. You, you know what I mean, left-sided, usually people it's the right dominant hand, speech area is affected. Uh, I'm showing you this. So this is the patient with the bleed, post-op. This is a before surgery, after surgery, all right, everything is clean. He remains hem aphasic with right hemiplegia. He can't even recognize, he takes a while, almost by the end of three, four weeks, then he, be, he come around to be able to understand, but still remains aphasic, very drowsy. Then, he, then I started at around about two months at second round. He took a three months, full three months course. I didn't give it to him. It's, they say they come back and they ask for more. Okay, and his speech has improved. Uh, and at the end of the day, he was able to walk independently, still dysphagic, but his dysphagia, he's able to speak full, simple sentences. He speaks, I tested his all the different languages, English, Chinese, Bahasa, Melayu. 
I tested all three because the speech area is slightly different from each. And his hemiparesis is three or five. So, all right, not, not that uh, I, I'm not too sure, is it? But I'm still, I was, one thing I noticed is that his dysphagia improved. His aphasia, he, he came from, he converts from a aphasic state to a dysphasic state much faster after taking neuro aid. Okay, next is this man, uh, Mr. Lee Pong, 63-year-old man, uh, heavy smoker, hypertensive, no previous medical history, came in with GCS5. In fact, he was transferred to a hospital because uh, they want a second opinion and they want to save him at all costs. They are aware that he may be put in a system vegetative state in this case. All right. Uh, we have told him says that we, we, we can save, but the quality of life, not too sure. He was already right hemiplegic. Uh, he was already intubated. We told him, says, if you are able to, uh, I will do the surgery, but no promise that he will wake up able to speak. And his right hemiplegia, I do not promise he'll get better. All right? All right, this is post-op. He's now, he's now able to speak. He's, uh, he's still dysphasic. In f at first, he was bedridden for quite a while. About, it took about eight weeks. I started about also three months after the stroke. It took six months. Okay? I called the son just before I came out, just to double check. Uh, his slow improvement, but he's mentally clearer, a lot clearer. He's dysphasic, but able to speak sentences. He's, he's more fluent in his Hokkien. He can feed himself. He needs help to walk. When I say needs help to walk, it's minimal assistance. All right? Uh, it's pretty good. Next is this guy, 59-year-old man, Malaysian Chinese, came to Singapore for holiday. Heavy smoker, hypertensive, unfortunately had a bleed in the brain. Uh, he went into coma, GCS was also five. This is the aneurysm. Before uh, he came in with this hemorrhage, the family did, uh, they was told, they, they re received an opinion, says that, look, this is bad. Uh, some people leave it alone. I look at this, it looks, there was no SAH. I'm not too sure was it, I couldn't exclude because it was near the Sylvan fissure. I couldn't exclude was there an aneurysm. So I, this is, if you want to save life standard, I say I can't promise it, but what's the quality of life? They say they want to save him at all costs too. So I did an angiogram to my surprise is secondary to this, uh, there's an ICA aneurysm. Uh, I clip it and I remove the blood clot. This patient has gone through everything. After surgery, he's more responsive in terms of arms, start to show a bit movement, but he had went to severe basal spasms. I operated through the left, so he's, he even shows, demonstrates subsequently complete pa paralyzed. He's completely paralyzed because of the severe basal spasms. With his patients with this kind of hemorrhage, it's expected. He has intraventricular bleed, he has a huge hematoma. He's expected to have severe basal spasms. So we treated him for quite long. He, was, he remains in the ICU for quite a while, uh, eight, eight weeks, I think, around there. He remains in hospital for a total of three months. So it is after all this, then we say, should we start neuro aid? Because uh, he's in this state, I see there's no harm trying. I told him that the cognitively he may be affected, short-term memory may be impaired, not too sure about right side up. So we started. He was aphasic, right hemiplegia. He continued, He's very, they are very happy now. He is able to go to his usual coffee shop and have drinks with his friend and chit chat. But his short term memory is still slightly impaired. I mean, uh, short term memory is still very, uh, very, he took at least six months. This is not, when I say that you come back to take the medicine, do not need a prescription, just come back to my clinic and get, that's it. I, I want them to, 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 to be self-motivated to be convinced enough to be self-motivated, not for me to push the drugs to them because I do not want to be perceived. So he took, they took at least six months, I think. They took more than six months, I can't remember. So they find it very useful. So this is uh, his independent activities of daily living, all right? He, he still cannot calculate. Mathematics is still very poor, I tested, okay? Uh, previously, his maths wise, she was quite good. Okay, the fourth one, this is a recent case, in an elderly, 79-year-old lady, very active person, first hemorrhage, it was a huge intracerebral. Same, daughter is a lawyer. She wants to save her mom, she's very close to her mom, wants to save her mom at all costs. This is, this, this is a, uh, on admission, she was also GCS around five. All right, so immediately intubate, and uh, we did the surgery. She did not require a shunt subsequently. There was a temporary drain, EVD. 
she was bedridden, uh, very slow to recover, extremely slow, not even opening to eyes, did the subsequent, do, did the scan, make sure no chance infection, urea electrolytes are all right. She's still bedridden. So only occasionally open eyes to painful st stimulus. So we started treatment. Um, the, ma the, sis the daughter, the lawyer, the daughter says she noticed that her response was much faster, but she remains aphasic. Till date. She remains a physic and she remains bed bound. So I want to show you all these cases to see for yourself. Uh, this is an elderly or a left sided hemorrhage. Some are beyond my expectations, the recovery, they have achieved potential. Um, I think I do not want to, definitely, I'm more, now I'm more convinced to use Neuro 8. Um, there's no side effects, the compliance is no issues, no. Uh, I think it can be explained, the pharm patient's improvement can be explained by the pharmacological data, increase in the brain de derived neurotropic, but how much is it due to natural recovery or how much is due to neuro aid, I cannot quantify. Um, I'm convinced that we should start early, but there are many questions that, that there's left unanswered. Uh, do all patients benefit beyond my age? Do they benefit? I'm not too sure, just like this elderly lady. They notice an improvement and after that, the plateau. So the, the, what about the dosage and durations? What about for pediatrics, uh, the usage for pediatrics? These are questions that are left unanswered. I think uh, we will need further, we need time and further uh, uh, all these trials to come out to give the shed more lights into it. Thank you.